Welcome back to the channel. Today we start a new build. It's a 2012 Hot Rod Lincoln MKT. Now this is not a auction car, it's actually a YouTube viewers car. I picked it up in the top of the mitten, which is Michigan for anyone that doesn't know, and it was at Hillbilly Bob's Towing and Recovery, Dog Breeding, Feed Store, and Taxidermy. Nice guy, just had a lot going on in this house. So it went uh, a couple rounds of the deer, and won by a knockout, but it did take some bruises, so we're going to have to fix that up. So, let's get it down to the shop and get it unloaded and take a look at it. I'm not going to waste time getting the, everyone's favorite part of the rebuild, so let's get it off the trailer. Oh, look at all that blue smoke. I'd like to blame Ford for a bad engine, but... Let's be realistic. It's been started a couple times without the mass airflow sensor connected, so the engine's probably full of a lot of extra fuel. <coughs> so now that it's in the shop where it's a little warmer, we can take a look at it. The deer hit high, well, like they usually do, and took out everything above the bumper and everything behind everything above the bumper. That radiator support is magnesium, so it kind of just shatters, especially when it's cold. Hood's aluminum, fenders are metal, whole front end is plastic. We have a broken windshield from where the hood went back into it. Those hood hinges are made of GM's Playdonium. Ford borrowed it. And our airbags didn't go off, but our seatbelt deployed pre-tensioner in both the retractor and the buckle. And hopefully the steering column didn't deploy. So we'll start getting some parts off so we can see inside. We'll pull the hood off first, so we got to take the washer line off. Disconnect the hose from the cowl screen, and then unplug it. tuck it up in the hood so we don't get it snagged on anything. Then we can start unbolting our hinges. We don't even need to open the hood for this. Not that it latches anyway. And we have a celebrity guest appearance. I don't know how long he's going to stay around. Usually it shows up at the end. We're going to have to relocate our celebrity guest and relocate him once again. Maybe that's why I have no friends. Deer parts. I'll pull the rest of our radiator support out of here. We'll disconnect our hood cable. It's a lot easier if you unbolt the latch from the radiator support, but well, I didn't want to. We're going to do it the hard way. Throw the rest of this in the pile. 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 We can unplug our headlight, or at least try. Pile. Lots of plastic parts. But at least those parts just melt in a fire. Those magnesium parts in the fire, yeah, they uh, don't go out so easy. Then we know why Ford decided to start making the radiator supports out of fiberglass and plastic instead of magnesium. Now we can remove our air box puzzle. I don't think we have all the pieces. Filter looks clean. Doesn't look like anything. Well, this one's got some clips. So we'll throw that in a different pile. The rest of the plastic is just pretty much garbage. This is the cover for the engine. We're gonna be finding plastic in here for a while. Hmm. 
And then there's a mass airflow sensor. And we'll put it back in there. Now we're going to bolt our fender. Put the bolts on the bottom. Put this bracket on the lower rail. A couple bolts across the top. Some are ripped out. One of our fender is loose. We have to adjust the rear so we can get the bolts inside the door because our door won't open. Ship it. No, it will. One bolt to the very top. Another one in the back. The bracket's a little bent. Weld it on so we'll straighten it out. A little cloth, this little filler piece on the bottom of the fender. It covers up the last two bolts on the bottom. slide it off the clip so we don't break the clip. And we'll take it off later. Top clip popped out already, so didn't have to worry about that one. We can get those two bolts on the bottom. And our fender should be free. Now we're going to have to pull the wheel off. I was trying to avoid this. I did find the key for the wheel locks and the glove box, so it wasn't much searching. We got our wheel out of the way. You can see our fender liner. And bolt that front bumper. And there's a couple of plastic clips with the Phillips heads in them. So we'll unscrew those and pop them out of there. Very gently. Luckily there wasn't enough dirt in those clips that they actually did unscrew like they were supposed to. Usually it's a struggle. This must have been one of those clean Michigan cars. A couple Christmas trees in the lower flap. And we missed one. There's always one. Pop that out of there and our wheel liner's out. Okay, Ford. I was gonna try and not make fun of you, but well, then you did this. So yes, that's foam. Ford feels the need to glue their fenders on because they don't trust their bolts and that little dimple in the middle of it is where one of the bolts are. Now, don't think that there's any way you could actually see that bolt, what size it is or where it's at. They just give you a hint of where it might be. So we gotta kinda dig it out of there. I'm just gonna push the foam around it, see what size it is, and then jam a socket on there and hope for the best. Looks like a 10. Yep, it's off. Now we could cut that foam out of there, but instead we're just gonna tear it out because if we bend the fender, which is actually weaker than the foam, uh, it doesn't really matter because it's already bent. So we're just gonna keep tearing it out of there. I'm not sure why Ford decided it was a good idea to glue these fenders on. Perhaps the engineer that designed this car had a side hustle selling this foam to Ford and was able to convince the bean counters that it was necessary and made himself a little money. Got your classic case. Uh, they built the car and then tried to put the hood on and realized they had no place for the hinges. So they put a bracket in. So I'm just gonna take the hinge mounting plate off with the hinge. That way I don't lose the bolt for the hinge. The mounting plate is bent as well as the hinge. And that's really all that plate does. Give the hinge a place to sit. Okay. In the pile. Somebody's been here before. Took me a second to figure out what that was. It was actually a 
big dent there too. All those scratches. Somebody had that door off and they got the door check in between there and just kept smashing the door closed. They dented the pillar. And that's why I always drop them down in the door. So you don't do stuff like that. So now we can disconnect our front bumper from our wheel liner on the driver's side. There's a couple screws and clips in the bottom here. These are our favorite little clips with the Phillips head that you have to get just right so you don't push them back in, but just enough so they actually unthread and you can get them disconnected. I don't want to take this tire off. Bad enough I had to take the other one off. Let me take the rest of our screws out of here. Somebody's been here before. There were a couple different size screws in here. And they shouldn't have been. We'll have to see just how much they changed. I think we got them all. Nope, there's one more on the bottom. We'll wiggle and pull and we'll get our bumper to unclip from our fender. Now we can disconnect our fog light. All of our lower grills, our fog light and the lower valance are still good on this bumper. Everything was up high. Top of the bumper's cracked. All the grills are broken on the top, but everything on the bottom's good. Disconnect the other fog light. We even have a good license plate bracket that the owner doesn't want to put back on because Michigan doesn't use the front plate. Sure, if they hit a deer or a moose. Inspection ports in the valve cover. Couple bag coils. There's supposed to be a cover on that engine. So we don't have to look at it. Now, when I say those coils are bad, I mean the plugs were cracked. They, however, still were working. There was no misfire or anything, which is weird because usually Ford coils go bad if you look at them wrong. And these were still going strong after they got hit with a deer. And you guys always want to know what the pile looks like? Well, there it is. We're still going to be adding to it, but that's the most of it. I'm going to unbolt the rest of our radiator support. Yep, that's it. bolt on our little bracket here. We got a new bolt that was a little longer because our bracket's thicker. We bolt that in. The top of the rail is twisted in a little bit, so we're gonna pull it back out. All the damage is before the crumple zone, so we can go ahead and fix it. Clamped on our puller for our frame rack, and our car is all tied up to our non-mobile frame rack. Hopefully it stays non-mobile. That comes down with an MKT. Uh, the building wasn't very safe. So we'll start our pulls. This isn't going to take much. To change that piece, you can't section it. It has to be changed all the way back, which is a much bigger job. This little part at the end where the radiator support is, just fold it in. So with a little work, we can save it. The bracket on the end, I'm going to end up changing. even though we're hammering it straight. Stress relieve all of our rail. And 
Yeah, we'll get the body hammer out and use it for what it's intended for. I think, anyway. And then we'll incorrectly use our other hammer as a dolly. The tool experts just can't win with me. Working on both our headlight and the driver's side. We have our upper rail all straightened out. So we're off of our frame rack. Move it over in the corner of the shop where we can take it apart because it's not going to drive in a minute. We can unplug our headlight. This plug is broken. It was crushed from the last time somebody was there. That front bumper reinforcement has also been replaced at one time. It's supposed to be welded on. They never welded it back on. It's also supposed to be painted. They clearly didn't paint it either. Now we can unbolt the lower section of our multi-piece radiator support. It's not supposed to be multi-piece. This radiator support mounting bracket on the rail, pretty twisted up. Probably gonna have to replace that. And there's one bracket for the fender that was not only mangled, but torn in half. So we're also gonna have to replace that. We can disconnect the air intake tube from the throttle body. And the breather hose was already broken off. Now everyone's favorite spring clamps. Slide those off the thermostat housing. Radiator hoses, upper and lower, both come off with the radiator. Much easier than trying to disconnect them from the radiator. And we have some more spring clamps for our trans cooler lines. Not sure why they even put these spring clamps on there because the barbs on these lines will keep any hose from ever falling off again regardless of how much pressure you push through it. We just take a screwdriver and jam it in the end. Pull on it at the same time and we'll either get the hose off or stab ourselves in the hand. Either way, we're gonna get some fluids. And it will be red. Looks like it's trans fluid today. Now we can get to that lower hose and see if we're getting trans fluid or blood out of this one. These things do not like to give up. There we go. Just trans fluid this time. This is certainly inconvenient. I know, I could walk across the shop and go get the spring clamp tool, but I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna complain. Disconnect this from the overflow bottle. Pretty much all the hoses stay with the radiator, except for the trans cooler lines. You can disconnect our AC line. That was the AC machine in the background. Believe it or not, the system was full. C lines off. Vacuum pack for freshness. And our condenser should be free. And so is our radiator. So the bolt just fell off the bottom. Pull the wiring harness out of the way and get the rest of our cooling fan out of here. Connect our power steering cooler from the bottom of the radiator support. You can pull the lines off either end, but I'm just going to take the whole thing off and set it down. That way I don't have power steering fluid leaking all over the place. Keep the system closed. I will change it eventually. Now the radiator and condenser are supposed to go in inside of the radiator support, but it comes out much easier if you take it out first. Especially now since there is no top to the radiator support. That's that in the pile. Those power steering hoses are supposed to be clipped into the side of the radiator support, but they weren't, so I guess we don't need our fork. Push this out of here and toss that in the pile. All 
Now we're going to pull our O2 sensor out of here. See if it actually comes out. Not too bad. This is one of those new 90 degree ones with those tight areas. We're going to change it because it's supposed to be a straight one. Now that that's out of the way, we can pull our heat shield off for our manifold. I'm going to do a little body work on it. It's not supposed to have all those dents and wrinkles. So we'll hand that to the bodywork gnome, and when he's done, we'll put it back on. And yes, I happen to be the bodywork gnome today. Let's start all of our screws. These are ones you don't want to cross thread. It's amazing they even came out. Run them back in there, torque them down to manufacturer specs. Now we can pull our washer bottle out. We'll disconnect all our wires to our sensors and our washer pump. Then we can unbolt it from the frame rail. There's two nuts and one bolt. And we can disconnect our washer hoses. They're clipped into the frame rail. We're just going to leave them on the pump, that way we don't get them mixed up. Pull our reservoir out of here. And we're leaving a trail of washer fluid everywhere, so... We're going to clip this into the top. That way it'll be higher and won't leak out. So that's as far as we can go for today. As soon as we get some parts, we'll be back on this thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.